The road to the championships is here. The best talent from across the country will compete for the title of national champion. A journey culminating in a lifetime of hard work, dedication, and a passion for the game. The future of the game is here. And their journey starts now. Off the end of the bat. Down! The Hot Shots win it all! Beautiful Laguna Beach, California. Beautiful Southern California. Where else would you want to be? Inland, about 10 miles, we go to Irvine, California. Bill Barber Park, Deanna Manning Stadium. The Premier Girls Fast Pitch, 14U Premier Division National Championship. The Bolts won it all last year, 14U Platinum playing up. They're back this year going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Birmingham Thunderbolts. And certainly those Thunderbolts incredible against the Beverly Fan. It's all sorts of fun with these two teams meeting up. Hi there, folks, and welcome back to the ballpark. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, this is an Olympic gold medalist and a national champion. We try you've had a very good week to this point so when you think about these two teams and you think specifically about this age group even though recruiting has changed this is kind of the age now that we're seeing being recognized by college coaches correct especially on this stage so college coaches want to see athletes compete at the biggest stage so seeing them out here at a pgf national championship says a lot about where these girls can be in a few years so they're going to be identified now and they're going to start getting talked to quite a bit as uh, as the next year comes up our goal is simple we'll introduce you to all of these athletes throughout this show and make sure you understand their journeys who they are daigle wilson and a Joe Sullivan, Kaylee Byers, Eva Hodo, Brianna Camp, Haley Hart, Haley Good Pastor, Charlie Bennett, and then Madeline Flamia is at the bottom of the order for the Birmingham Thunderbolts, who, as we said, won it all last year against the Beverly Bandits. It's the Thunderbolts and the Bandits, and we are underway. Ava Lorenzotti's in the circle. From the right side against the right-handed bat of Daigle Wilson, who pops that one up, hugging the line. Down the left field line, into fair territory. Brooke Stang is there to put it away. It's Stang, Simcoe, Callahan. Del Riel, Odell, Kruger, Herman. Ratliff behind the plate, Lorenzotti is in the circle. Anna Jo Sullivan. This Thunderbolts team pulls the hands in, same spot, right along that foul line. Sullivan flies out to left field. Brooks Stang, with our umpires working this one, they've done such a great job this entire tournament, whether it be championship or those leading to it. Garcia, Mitchell, Massey, and Fields, a Premier Girls fast pitch, umpires in this matchup. Kaylee Byers. We've got some strike-throwing, aggressive swingers to start this game, and that's what you love. Oh, we barely got the intros through, and this inning is almost over. But we know that Lorenzotti's going to throw powerfully with a lot of upspin, so we can anticipate seeing quite a few fly balls in this ball game, at least until the adjustments are made at the plate. Davis from Beecher, Illinois, as she works in the circle, a 2026 grad, so a freshman as that one sails high. She's at Beecher High School. The daughter of Melissa and Tony Lorenzotti. Her foe at this point is Kaylee Byers. And that one into center field. That one well struck down off the base of the wall. Kylie is hurrying on around. Into second, hit for a slide. Kylie Byers with a double. Lorenzotti was just in that zone of throwing strikes, and this still has up spin. But Byers takes advantage of a pitch in the zone and absolutely crushes it to center field, hits the bottom of the wall, and gets her team into scoring position for the first time this game. Orange Beach, Alabama is the home of Ava Hodo. Orange Beach High School, where she plays for Shane Alexander, her high school coach, as she lifts that one foul down the left field line. Hodo the catcher. Been a part of a couple of state championship teams at Orange Beach High School, two A state champions this past year and then the year previous. 
just missed plating that run. I'll tell you, the pitches are in a good location because they aren't being hit fair. But the bolts are squaring up on that rise ball about letter high. They're just turning a little too quickly, but look at the location of that pitch between the plate and the chalk line. Bows that one back to the screen. So who inspires Ava? How about her grandmother, who she calls Nani? She says just last year, she's battling Parkinson's disease, but never gives up. Recently had a hip replacement. She's here, made the trip with my poppy cheering us on. And in front of grandparents, she gets it done. Hit hard in the left field. That will plate the run. I bet they're proud. One to nothing, Ava Hoda. Lester really quick two outs to start this inning. A double by Byers and then Hoda with a big RBI to get the first run of the ball game on the board. So a runner comes on out. McKinsey Yates will run Yates out there at first base. And Brianna Kemp will hit now. Kemp the DP right-handed bat from Hueytown, Alabama. She's at Hueytown High School. Her high school coach is Taylor Powell this 2025. Her parents are Patty and Brandon. In the backstop it goes. The runner moves into scoring position. McKenzie moves up. Kemp's known for having a good eye at the plate and stringing together good quality at bats. So a great position here for her with that runner out there in scoring position. Good take, 3-0 the count, not opening up her zone too much. She said she's grown her game in 2022. Speaking of Kemp, more selective as you said. Quality AB, she'll tell you that. She earns herself a walk in the game, backs it up right there. There's the first walk of the game. Spanish Forts, Alabama, very own Haley Hart. He's at Spanish Fort High School. Lauren Stewart, her high school coach there. Lifts that one, very shallow left field. Hangs up long enough to dump in there. May have a play at the plate. The throw, the tag, not in time. Staying with a beautiful throw right on the spot, but a good looking slide under that tag and another run. Two to nothing. This is aggressive base running off on contact because there are two, stro or two outs. This pitch muscled in the left field. Not stopping, rounding the base. This, this, this is a strong throw home, just a little high and off the mark. A nice attempt to get that tag down, but a beautiful slide in safe. 1-0 and oh the count. Kaylee Goodpaster. Kaylee from Panama City, Florida. Beautiful down there, those white sandy beaches. New Bay Haven Charter Academy as Kaylee fouls that one off. Amber and Isaac are her parents. Dad played college football at Wofford. This is a really good student, Junior Beta Club, a 4.5 GPA to start her high school academic journey. She's been able to play varsity sports. You see that in smaller schools and in different states. As a middle schooler, actually since sixth grade, she's been a varsity athlete. Basketball and softball. Inside, that'll load him up. We 
said it, Amanda, two quick outs, and now it's a bit of an avalanche that's welling up at the top of the hill. Now you think back to Kylie Byers and that double up the middle to get things going. And then Hoda with the little RBI. Walks, base hits, just stringing together and making things happen. And looks like we're gonna have an early pitching change. Chad Moran, who has been with the Bandits since 2010. Daughter Maddie played with the Bandits till 2013. Now is it James Madison? John Kronberger on that staff as well. His daughter Jane is sophomore at Notre Dame. And John and Sarah Stone, who have been with the Bandits for eight years. Daughter Sarah is in Indiana. So a move for now. As Lexi moves into the circle. Lexi Haynes from Pennsylvania. What do we know about her stuff-wise? Well, she's another power pitcher, and she's got a great rise and a change-up. So maybe a slightly similar look, although we didn't see many off-speed pitches from Lauren Zotti. But I think it's just time to change the momentum and see if she could break apart some of the rhythm that the Bolts have right now. But I would imagine part of that conversation that Coach Moran had with Lauren Zotti when she was leaving is, hey, keep your head in this ball game. It's the first inning, and you could likely come back, and you could come back very soon. So keep your head up and make sure you stay warm. Ever through all your journeys, did you find yourself leaving a game at one point only to re-enter in a key moment? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of times that that happens, especially when it gets down to this point in the season. Lauren Zotti is a pitcher they've relied on. And so you can't not use her as an option as this game goes on. Lexi Hames out of Harmony, Pennsylvania, skips the first pitch in there as she faces Charlie Bennett. Lexi, the daughter of Marlise and Chase, and the younger sister of Mia. Of Harmony, Pennsylvania, Seneca Valley High School. Well, she's a sophomore. On the ground, sneaks on through. That will play one. That will play the pair. It's four to nothing. Thunderbolts. Bennett doing just enough to drive in two more. And it looked like Odell had a chance on this. This ball was well hit up the middle, just out of the reach of Addy Odell at shortstop. She would have had an opportunity to get out at second, but instead two runs score. Over the outside corner. To the flame, Madeline Flamia. Birmingham Thunderbolts really love her contributions. He's at Pisgah High School in Pisgah, Alabama. Billy Duncan is her head coach there. All-state softball competitor in 21 and 22. In on the hands, leaving her feet, making a play over there is Sydney Herman. Nine, that's right, nine bolts stepped into the batter's box. Remember, they won it all last year at the Platinum Division. They've been under this pressure. They look very comfortable. The Bolts family, a member of the coaching staff that did amazing things with his team at the 12U level. And now staying to support those that mean the most to him. Beverly Bandits, batting order. Simcoe, Stagg, Ratliff, Herman, Del Real, Odell, Poe, Callahan and Kruger in the circle. Madeline Byrne, away she goes as she fires a screwball. And this is outside. Anna Simcoe, her foe out of Canton, Michigan. Plymouth High School, Lauren Evans, her head coach there. Madeline Bird from Bay Minette, Alabama. Baldwin County High School, a 2025 grad. That one jumps out of the zone, 2-0 the count. What do we know about Madeline and her stuff? 
Well, she's another power pitcher who just spins the ball really, really well. But most importantly, she's got great composure out there in the circles, done tremendous things all tournament long. But most importantly, you want somebody who's solid and steady in big games like this. Madeline, the daughter of Amy and Matthew Bird. Mom played softball, University of Mobile. Madeline here last year working and pitching in the circle when they won it all at the platinum level. Chases a pitch out of the zone. Hannah will get back to the box. The center fielder for this Bandits team. All district, all conference freshman year, her first year of high school softball, Hannah Simcoe. Spoils a pitch away. She shares my athleticism, my speed. Those are the best things about my game. My leadership skills in the outfield are also helpful. She said, when I stand at the plate, I read the defense. I try and utilize my slapping skills to get it through. That's her self-scouting report. She takes outside, three and two the count. I love the approach at the plate right now, especially after your team gets down by four after the top of the inning. It's important to come in and not just focus on getting on base, but focus on having a good quality at bat. Rise ball gets a swing and a miss. That is strike three. Simcoe goes down. So Simcoe battled her way through this at bat. And that's a tough pitch. That's a rise ball. Starts at the belt and goes up. It's tough to lay off of. So nice job digging out of a hole in the circle, starting out behind in the count. Brooks Stang, the left fielder. From Brookville, Indiana. Similar pitch taken high. 1-0 the count to the daughter of Leslie and Brent. Part of a 10 U PGF National Championship team with the Beverly Bandits. I remember that team and some of those athletes. One and one. Now, as you see, these organizations reach these championship games year after year, and you recognize the names. It gets pretty fun to see that they played in the 10 U and then continue on to the 12 U. Tried to shoot it the other way, dumps that one foul. Defensively working behind. Good pass to your left, the Byers in center, Sullivan is in right. Flamia Hart, Bennett and Wilson with Hodo, who's already been running the bases like crazy out there behind home plate. Ball, a good weapon thus far. It's got to be set up, and when set up, really effective. Yeah, that's a pitch over the course of the game you want to try to lay off of. If it starts at your belt, it's likely going to go up, and that pitch has a lot of movement on it. Ava Ratliff takes her opportunity now from Bedford, Indiana. You'll notice multiple states, multiple places around the Midwest that make up this Beverly Bandits team, the Beverly Bandits Club, from just outside of Chicago, Illinois. Some big dreams for Ava, that's exciting to see. She's at Bedford North Lawrence High School. Ball just got a piece of the outside corner, one and one to count. She's the daughter of Jeremy and Brooke Rattler. She gets the third wheel a lot on dates with mom and dad because it's just the three of them, an only child. The pitch is dangerous, one and two. The work she did last year, it's all coming back to us now. So she steps back off the rubber. Hodo and Bird making sure they're on the same page. Hodo's doing a good job of working to get strikes for her pitcher. That one a 
curveball. It didn't elevate, instead spin side to side. That's not one, not two, but three strikeouts. This good, table for one. A week full of games, whether you're looking on as these younger bolts are, or whether you're knee deep in it, you've got to really survive. Pool play gets you warmed up, and then bracket play is where the challenges come up. Some have to dig out of the loser's bracket. That's not the case for the Thunderbolts, as you can see, a very dominating run. Rogue FC gave them a big scare, but then they really rolled to the finals. Yeah, a whole bunch of shutouts, and then a couple of, well, I should say one close one, but a lot of runs scored. The way the pitching is looking today, it's, it's going to be tough. It might take a couple of runs by the Thunderbolts, and with that solid pitching, they could be in good shape. So we saw nine come to bat for Brandon Kemp's team, and it was a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, Amanda, with two outs. Yeah, this all started with Kylie Byers. She got the party going. Hodo followed. Kemp with the walk. Haley Hart comes up with a big RBI. Bennett, the two-run single up the middle. Everyone got involved that first inning. And away we go. Top of the order again. Let's see, Hames has stepped into the circle. We're guessing we'll see Avon Lorenzotti again at some point in this game. Diggle fly to left field. She and Hannah Jo Sullivan both aggressive. Similar spots where they hit the softball. Change up, one and one the count as she takes low. Daigle from Orange Beach, Alabama. Daughter of Rebecca and Matt. Heavily decorated already through her journeys in high school. Won that state championship we shared about at the smaller level. Max Preps ranked her top five in the state of Alabama as a base stealer. This past season, she stole 62 of 63 attempts for her high school team. You've got to get on a lot to steal that many bases. I was thinking that same thing. I want to know her on base percentage, her batting average, <laughs> all the numbers, because that is a ton of stolen bases. I can give you this, as far as stats go, 4.3 grade point average. That's the best one. So excellent in the classroom for Daigle. The great name, Daigle Wilson. Stayed back as long as she could in that changeup. I like that Hames is bringing out the off speed. I think it's going to come in handy as this game goes on, especially to complement her rise ball. Change the eye level going high and hard. And then get that hitter out front with that off speed down. It'll be a good combination. Soft, followed by a rise ball that runs up and away. Daigle shares some of her workouts lately. T work, a lot of hitting practice, speed and agility training as well. She hits with Ava Hodo and works with KG favorites as well. Always at the ballpark, working together those three. She's worked it full, the three two. Outside corner, strike three. That was a really great pitch on the outside corner. I like that location. Who is this team, Amanda Freed? I know you've communicated. Well, the Bolts in general, their organization is about team first. So you hear that a lot. They've got a lot of pitching depth, which is evident in the scores when you look at their journey. And then they're just an all-around solid team pulling together defensively, offensively in the circle. I mean, it's tough to beat when you're firing on all cylinders. Brandon Kemp will hear from him at some point. The coach on the staff since its inception in 2015, Cam Byers as an assistant. 
and part of the team as well. Coaches third base and calls pitches. Instructor at the batter's box in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Robert Favors joining the coaching staff this year. Robert coaches first base, helps with pitch calling as well. Anna Jo Sullivan. Two and one to count. From Brandon, Mississippi, Brandon High School. She works with Heidi Hill as her high school coach. She takes a curveball that misses away. Her dad, Chip, played college baseball. Her mom, Mandy, played college tennis. And her brother, Hayden, is a senior, and he's a good high school baseball player. 3-1, what an approach, base hit right field. Tried to pull one in her first at bat, not that time. Yeah, that was a really nice adjustment. Kept the hands in tight and took the barrel straight to the ball. Watch those hands and the head stay down. Beautiful piece of hitting. Kai gets her chance now. Kylie Byers. Change up for strike one. That's a great first pitch. She doubled. She, she's the one who kind of Turned the table over at the party, if you will, because it went quick and quiet, fly out, fly out. Then her double just opened things up. And you think, oh, it's one double. It's not a big deal. We have two outs. But the floodgates just opened. Mechanicsville, Virginia. Hanover High School. Love that stance. Both eyes on the pitcher with that open stance. Runner's gonna give it a go, throw down, tag, missed her. Slipping in front, Addie O'Dell trying to make the tag. Ratliff, pretty darn good throw. Yeah, the throw was right on the money, and O'Dell tried to sell that tag. But it does look like Sullivan. Ooh. Big aggressive secondary lead off the base again for Sullivan. Take another look at this. The tag is a little high, but that front foot looks like it's up over the bag. Did she get her though play. at all? Did she get her at all? From that angle, it was hard to tell. With the glove? Yeah. I think she did. She did. I okay. did. I, I do. I do think she did. Right there on the back. Now, whether the foot got in there first, I don't know if I'm prepared to call that. 3-2. There is replay, there is review. And you spend it, you keep it. You get two overall should you spend the first one and get it overturned. If you spend it and it is not overturned on appeal, then you're done. But it does exist in these championship games. There you go. Those challenges. Change up again. Waited, waited, waited. Races up the back. That's a nice play. Everything had to go well. You had good speed. You had a slow roller on a change up. An aerial Kruger. Well done. Byers booked it down the line as soon as that hit her barrel. Did not spend a lot of time Kruger transitioning and making a strong throw. Still a close play. Score to run. Back to the screen on that elevated pitch. Four to nothing to score. Both these teams defensively have arrived. Everything is clean. So those four runs you see in the first, a couple of walks and a bunch of solid base hits. and two strikes to count. 10 to 12 teams, that's usually what the Thunderbolts roll out 
at the premier level, ages 8 to 18. Facility in Birmingham, but a lot of representation throughout the South. That one sails high. You talk about the Bandits, they're known as being a Midwest team, a PGF, Chicagoland area, but players from all over the Midwest, from Wisconsin and from Michigan and from Indiana, from Illinois, and they're continuing to grow. Ohio as well, don't want to leave out Ohio. That one a nice job blocking it up. As a matter of fact, the Bandits website will tell you the 22-23 teams are coming soon, and they mentioned those states I just did, along with California as they grow west. Two and two the count. What I like about both the Bandits organization and the Bolts is they've been growing, but it's kind of been a slow and steady growth. And you see a lot of really successful teams because of this in their organization. They take time and they're purposeful about expanding the organization. This is the fourth Bandits team we've seen over the last couple weeks in championships in the third Thunderbolts. Goodness, that rise ball effective. And a great job for Lexi. It's only four. And as they head back into the dugout, we head with them. I would imagine inspirational speech. Kick those bats, wake them up. The Premier Girls Fast Pitch, 14U Premier Division National Championship. How beautiful is that shot? as we peer into the Pacific. Understand this, the Thunderbolts hit their bump in the road and they pushed right back. They beat those Beverly Bandits 7-0, so Beverly Bandits had to come back and pull one out against the Riptide. These, these two just saw each other. I have a feeling they're gonna be seeing each other for a couple of years into the future. Madeline Bird opened things up by striking out the side. Moran, head coach, Sidney Herman from Greenwood, Indiana, Center Grove High School, a 2025 grad, one and one the count. Herman's dad, Chris, played football at Butler in Indianapolis. A bit of a Butler family because their great-grandfather played three sports at Butler University. One of the coaches, Tony Hinkle. If you know anything, it's Hinkle Fieldhouse. That's the name of Butler's beautiful arena. So there are some strong ties there. As that one is popped foul. These bandits, their grit, the Midwestern style, their approach, that kind of starts who they are. The expectations of those six club overall PGF championships, they consistently try to jump and grab that bar as that one sails high. But a fun team when you talk about their scouting report, Amanda. Yeah, these bandits are exciting to watch and like most of the bandits, they like to cause a little chaos when they get themselves on the base paths. Do it again, two balls and two strikes to count. So much fun with those Butler ties. Her cousin is in the Butler Hall of Fame as a football player. But then there was that rebel great uncle who played catcher in baseball in Indiana. <laughs> that one is high. Three and two the count. Sydney, a really good student, a 4.6 GPA, AP and honors classes. Her class has 757 students in it. She's ranked 25th. Good at bat. 3-2. Giving it a run and over the shoulder. Nothing there, nothing there for the left fielder. Good pastor charging in. Yeah, we got a lot of really good student athletes on the field. And I know it's been drilled into them. But 
the more you can stay on top of your grades and on top of your schoolwork, the more opportunities you're going to have, even if you decide not to take the softball or sports route in college. Teaches good life management, balance, time management. How about that approach? But how about that defense, though it popped in and out of the glove? Maybe turning it into an out. Nice recovery there. She ended up good past her, leaving her feet. And when she did, almost ended up stabbing at the softball, couldn't hold on. This was a pretty swing, a solid hit. And it looked like it was gonna be right at Goodpaster, but she did leave her feet, it hit the fingers of the glove and bounced away. It's a nice job of taking two by Herman. A very close play. So a couple of bases for Sydney. Ball gets a swing and a miss. Bella Del Rio takes her chance. Now the third baseman. 29 on that jersey. Isabella, her given name. From Crown Point, Indiana. Right down the middle, 0 and 2. Her mom is Terry, her dad is Sergio. Oh, her sister, I'm sure she watches very closely, Vanessa, because Vanessa is a great athlete. Different sport, though, volleyball, but is headed to the college ranks after this year to Akron to play volleyball, so Vanessa paving the way as a college athlete. Into the catcher's minute goes. More domination. Bella goes down. Madeline responds. And a nice sequence of pitches. Comes with a tight spinning curve. A little foul tip. Hodo's doing a really nice job receiving behind the plate. Addison Odell, or Addie, as she goes by from Newton, Illinois. Newton Community High School. This is a really well-rounded athlete, as a matter of fact. Qualified at the state level for long jump, the 4x200, the 4x100. You see her dream schools there, which include a couple of SECs and then Illinois. It's fun to see the dream schools and how much they're scattered across the country. We see a lot of Oklahomas, obviously, a lot of UCLA's, a lot of those teams that you see in the Women's College World Series. But you also see a lot of other schools. Little sister Dempsey Wilson and older brother Keaton Odell. There's a strike over the outside corner. She gives a lot of credit to her mom. These are her words. We grew up with an absent father. My mom has been my best friend, my guide since day one. She's been through my side through everything. to the count. Got the call over the outside corner with a screwball. Extended that zone just a little bit. Folks, that's five strikeouts already. And let's take a look at this location. You know, it's it's stretching the strike zone. That's not technically a strike, but with two strikes, I don't want to make that the umpire's decision. But if that's going to be called, I'm living there all day. 1-0 and oh the count to Addie Poe. Addison is from Indianapolis, Roncalli High School. David Locke is her head coach this 2025. One and one the count. Follow 
women's basketball closely. You may remember Katie Douglas, who played at Purdue, then went on to the WNBA. That's Addie's aunt. As Addie hits it out towards short, takes a friendly bounce. They're going to send the runner all around the throw to the plate. In there. And that time, the bounce taketh away. And would have, could have, should have been the third out, but it hopped right over the glove of Haley Hart. And that's why it's important to make solid contact in the dirt. Because then you have opportunities for bounces to go your way. She hit this ball hard, got all the way into center field, and picked up the Bandits' first run of the ball game. Good conversation, Madeline Byrne. Ava Hodo comes out to chat with her. Headed hard, and the smallest of pebbles changed the course of this inning. And a pretty slide there by Sydney, just in case. Adriana Callahan, the right fielder. Callahan. From Libertyville, Illinois, takes strike one over the outside corner. Rosangela and Ryan are her parents, and Daniel is her younger 13-year-old brother. And on the 0-1, she takes high, one ball and one strike to count. Really good speed here. 2.7 seconds home to first. Good power as well, up to nearly 80 miles an hour. Exit velocity. One and two the count. Addie hoping to be off to the races. And she may be, depends, sinks in front of the shortstop. Boy, that's good speed, but an even better play. Haley Hart shoots it on across the diamond. She knew she had to. Very close there at first. I don't know if they'll take another look at that one. They probably should. Four to one, and they may take a look. So they will take a look at this one. And that will, in all likelihood, extend the inning. You know what I'm curious about is when that call was made, the runner, Poe, rounding third, headed for home, would have scored, but she stopped halfway. I'm curious if she would have continued on and slid into home if they would have been awarded that run at home. You added an entirely new wrinkle. And the umpires have, once this call is made, the ability to place runners where they determine it's the best call. Yeah, they're going to overturn it in all likelihood. Be shocked if they don't. Then there's a huge decision to make. And it's funny right now, Addy Poe is standing at third. I'd be standing on home plate. Yeah. <laughs> when I looked up after that play was made, Poe was halfway home. So she would have most definitely have scored if she ran hard all the way home. Because I don't think there would have been a play. Well, you keep running, you're right. And you're saying she slowed up because the play came to an end, correct? Yes. She would have absolutely kept running with the safe call. Yes. Well, I'm thinking for sure in that case, we'll see if Coach Moran asks for a run there. As they continue to take a look at it, you've seen some of the evidence at home. It looks like it's a play that should be turned over. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what they do with the runner or if they even address it. Here we go. Safe. No addressing the runner yet. The inning does go on. There is no ask at this point. And this may be the discussion. The runner here. 
And here comes the third base umpire in firm step, I think, to help make this decision. Let's see if we can find an angle. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a tough call. I don't know if you can just automatically award that run at home. I think had she run hard the entire way and stepped on home, I think they may have thought more about awarding her that run. Wait, they're sending her, no, no, no. The, 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 she doesn't need to go back to second base. So she needs to be at third base. And she had already touched and passed third base. No, and this is, this is a fair request, I think, for Chad Moran. She had, she had advanced to third. This is ground ball. She had touched third, was halfway home. And it's not a dead ball. It's a review. I understand if the call is a dead ball, then you do put the runner back at second. But it's a reviewed play. The runner had touched a third, so the right call is to put the runner at third. Four to one the score. Meantime, Madeline Bird saying, whatever you decide, let's go. I'm ready to go to work. And maybe a break, too, if you think about it for the bandits. Go ahead and spend it. Yeah, they'll put her out there. That's the right call. That's absolutely the right call. Just logic. That, that makes all the sense in the world. You know, it's tough, so it's a, there's a learning curve when you have review and play now because this is a situation coaches and players are not used to. So in the future, knowing that, you do continue on with that run. You score hard. You complete that run instead of pulling up. That way, you know, there's a little better argument in your favor. So instead of this being the third out and the inning over, there are runners on first and third with two outs. Let's watch Bird respond. Runner on the move into center field, and it is a turning point. There is a play at third. Slides in safe, though. Callahan, what a great decision to take off. An errant throw by Hodo. Poe now does score. So this is where speed on the base paths and that aggressive attack mode come in handy. And it looks like it was supposed to be a short throw to Bennett. The throw was a little errant to her glove side, or behind her, I should say. And ball gets into center field. Ariel Kruger takes up and away, 2-0 the count. Ariel is from Van Buren Township in Michigan, in Woodhaven High School, where Ken Kroll is her head coach. The daughter of Liana and Mark are four. Kruger children. Three of them adults now, though. And this outstanding athlete. Dad played minor league baseball for a bit. And Kruger also runs. Most people's least of all sports in the running world, cross country. But that means you're disciplined and you're fit. Yes. That is an incredible mind over matter sport. Ariel in that nine hole, she's the second baseman for this Bandits team. And it's in the black uniforms out of the Midwest, Chicagoland. Bolts in the white uniforms out of the Deep South, Birmingham, Alabama. Got that 3-0 green light. I'm curious about that swing, that pitch up in the zone. I like it, aggression. And it's popped up to the right side. Puts that one away. Anna Jo Sullivan makes the play, but a well-spent review by Coach Moran, and you bet they loved it. Overturn it, four to two.
Welcome back and glad to have you at the ballpark with all of us, certainly celebrating softball, the final game of a couple of weeks. And we certainly are excited to be joined by Dan Hay, the founder, president, CEO of PGF. And so here you are. It's not that you exhale yet because there's been a lot of celebrations, but how proud are you? Let me start with your staff at the work they've done, not just for two weeks, Dan, but for months leading up to this and now these two weeks. Well, I consider this production team my staff too. We've, uh, this, this team has worked with PGF for the last 10 years and we've got one of the strongest broadcasts in, in the sport as far as I'm concerned. And uh, the staff that we have throughout the, uh, this tournament has been, a lot of them have been working with us for eight or nine years, as Amanda knows, and uh, they come back every year and do a phenomenal job. There's a lot of moving parts that a lot of people don't see. Introducing these hitters as they work, as we get a chance to chat, is Brianna Kemp as she rolls that one out to third. You know what you guys do, too? You celebrate with these athletes. The opening ceremonies in the last couple of weeks, it's different than, you know, I went to the coaches' meeting. That's one thing. This is another because this is for the athletes. You guys do it so well. It's a party in the park. We have a concert. We bring out uh, uh, the, uh, Tapua, the Polynesian dancers, and uh, a live entertainment. We have this year John Kay singing for the kids. And uh, it's just a, we had, I think, close to 4,000 people or a little over 4,000 people attend this year. So they, they just have a good time. You know, we don't want them to think about softball the whole time they're here. But the one thing their coaches do think about and their families, as you see that celebration, they do think about the good that's being done. And you reminded everyone, I had a chance to attend the, the coaches meeting with you for week two, about the amount of money that's headed towards a good cause, and that's the John Wayne Cancer Institute. Kind of educate our viewers as to the impact. Yeah, our team's donated, uh, as a donation from each team, a little over $65,000 this year to the John Wayne Cancer Foundation. And over the last 10 years, we have accumulated a total donation of a little over seven hundred thousand dollars to the to the institute so it's interesting the evolution of recruiting means junior year you chat with coaches senior year you can sign on the dotted line certainly but ages like this very important to see the athletes play that's why the streaming and having these events it's kind of made this age group even more important hasn't it it, it has and even though the colleges can't talk to these kids yet there are still college coaches out here watching this level because these are their future stars so they're they're on their radar now hey university of texas right down below yeah. us. there you go <laughs> you can't hide when you wear all the gear as that good looking changeup is rolled out to the left side how about that plant but too much speed and so haley hart beat it out the other thing I think that has really grown this event are the two All-American games. It started, Dan, with a high school All-American game years back. You've now outed the Futures All-American game. Look, you celebrated with these athletes on a yeah. yacht. Those are the All-Americans. Yes, we put the seniors on a yacht this year and uh, took them through uh, Newport Harbor, and uh, they just had a phenomenal time, and their their families were there, too. In fact, you saw all the girls on the upper deck here on the screen, but uh, all the families were on the second level having lunch, and it was four hours on the water and we we just treat them treat them as well as we can the uh, futures teams uh, all americans which were made up of the sophomores and juniors they had a big night at dave and busters and uh, they were celebrating in a different way so it's interesting uh, it, it, you and i used to talk about this with amanda in depth when it first started to happen hey look a team not from california now it's hey look another team from the midwest another team from the deep south this is an incredible North American national event as that one trickles into shallow center field. Runners on first and third, looking to add back on now. This has really become a North America event. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of parity in the state now. In the southeast and the Midwest, they've got just as quality uh, teams as Southern California does. As you know, Southern California used to be the juggernaut uh, 10 years ago. These teams used to all still come and play, but in the finals, it was 90% SoCal, and it's not uh, that way at all any longer. So we still have very strong teams out here, but you've got to really fight your way to get to this game. These teams truly earned it, and they went through a lot of California teams to get here. And talk to me about kind of the, the qualification process at this premier level, how it is regional, that it does move to the national if you win a platinum or make it to the championship you get invited as well but it's such a tried and true way to earn your way here isn't it 
Yes, and you know, the teams that are already noted as the best in the country, we will invite them because those teams automatically qualify. We don't want them, them to go into a qualifier and beat everybody up. So right. we, we, we invite them and then we let the rest of them battle out for the remaining bids and they play in qualifiers throughout the United States. There is one out and a run will score. So an RBI, nice job making the right decision. Ariel Kruger out there at second base. Well, it looked like that oh, tag was made. she missed a tag? But there was a safe call. I, from here, it looked like that tag was made. Look at that inside out hit. No play at home. Oh, it, it looks like she may have avoided that tag. Boy, she did. It's a tough one. Wow, so the inning goes on. They'll tag again. Break it down. You've, been, you've called events. Uh, yes, you've I know. Called, you've been our play-by-play -play <laughs> man. I, I thought that was going to be a, a perfect one-hopper to third base. That was a strong throw by the right fielder. Yeah, we've been really impressed by some defenses. And speaking of being impressed, that 10 and under game this morning, <laughs> I still can't believe at that age that those young ladies are able to do what they're able to do. And I just think that's a testament to the growth of our sport and them wanting to come and be a part of and compete at this level. I mean, that age group has got it. That's going to impress you, too. They're always an exciting age group. And, you know, I think it was three years ago we were here and there were no home runs hit in any championship game over the two-week period except for a 10 and under kid <laughs> who hit it out of the park in the left that. field over that that pgf banner i could imagine the discussions as you guys led to adding that age group and maybe there was trepidation maybe not but it's been a huge hit I would imagine you hear from programs all around the country. Yeah, we do. And we didn't used to televise the 10 and unders, you know, because, you know, it's a very uh, uncertain age group every year. One year you could have 500 teams playing across the country, and the next year you might have 175. It's, it's you know, it isn't until they reach the age of 12 years old that they really start getting into it. So we're happy to have the 10s here, and we don't make any 10 and under teams qualify. They are, if they want to play, they can come into the tournament. And uh, we had 40 teams this year battle it out for the championship. 40, Dan. Hey. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, that's where you really get them to taste it and want it. You know, yeah, that absolutely. opening ceremonies yeah. is going to, that alone is going to bring them back yeah. here. They are you. so cute. You know, so it's, you, you've got some 10 year olds that already look like they're 14 and some 10 year olds that look like they're six. <laughs> so. We got great coaches. We got to see that on Sunday night. Really passionate about your brand. They really do feel like when they come out here, they are competing. As you guys say, it's the motto, best of the best. And I'm sure you hear from your coaches a lot. Yeah, we do. They're just, uh, you know, our coaches are very dedicated to the sport, and they're here for the kids and to make this a great experience for them. And Dangle, they, they wanted her to get out of the way. And so we'll... We'll do it again. Dan Hay chatting with us as we take one more look at this. What do you got, Dan? Well, the umpire is going to is going to decide whether that was intentional or not, and I think that's what he ruled. Well, I and think I think he got it right. Look like, yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah. I love the coach's challenge. We saw it play out just a minute yeah. ago. I love the fact that yeah. you talk about our broadcast team, and I agree with you. They're second to none out there. They make our job so easy. But to take that technology and then yeah. put it into a championship game, right. it's good. Yep. And if you go back to the replay on this hit by pitch, the kid's right knee is sticking out, and then you watch 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 the umpire what he does with his right knee. The umpires have yeah. been really no. good this year. Yeah, no, watch the watch the umpire's right knee what he does. Right there. See? <laughs> <laughs> he was watching it. Yeah. Very well done in the truck, by the way, as the boss called for that yeah. play. <laughs> Very well done out there. Very smart team. Green won the count. Popped up. Back of short. That one is put away out there by Abby Odell. Thank you for having us again. Thank we you for honored. being here. Top-notch team, you folks. We are honored. Dan Hay, President, CEO. And I heard he can host a mean dinner. Oh, boy. <laughs> Somehow That's my a tomahawk. My invite got lost in the mail to that one. <laughs> All right, away we go. Five to two is the score. It's the bottom half of inning number three. Thanks to Dan Hay and his entire team. 
And certainly thanks to our production team that he astutely praised because it's an incredible bunch. We will move to the top part of the order. Bandits are feeling kind of ornery. Feeling like they may just push back a little more in the next few innings. Let's see. That one is bunted foul. Hannah Simcoe. Hannah struck out back in the first inning. The athletic center fielder for this team. Dealing with Madeline Bird, who has five strikeouts already in a couple of innings. And defense in the perfect spot. They know their pitcher. She was shaded well in. Kylie Good passed her, made the play look easy. Now took a quick little step back and realized that ball was just exactly where she was positioned. Just underneath was Simco. They call her Brookie, and here she goes. This is Brooke Stang. Brooke goes right to work on one hop. Quickly, two outs. Charlie Bennett to Daigle Wilson on the 4-3 ground out. We love those as a pitcher, don't you? Hit it as hard as you want. It's right to my defenders. Okay, right at my defenders, especially when my defenders are playing the way that they are. But I do like the adjustment being made by the Bandits. Simcoe struck out her first at bat, made good contact. Stang struck out her first at bat, just made nice solid contact in that last swing. Well, let's watch and see if, in fact, it's just early engagement. Don't let her get ahead because that rise ball has been so dangerous. You can't offer it that one. That misses outside. But maybe it's, hey, be more aggressive early. Don't let her get comfortable in the count. Curveball missed outside to Ava Ratliff, who struck out back in the first inning. Fly ball, right field. Pitch was away, pretty well struck. That is a very clean and swift inning. Madeline Bird shut them down in the third. 5-2, she and her mates on top. Certainly glad to have you back, and it's a beautiful, beautiful softball day. Chad Moran is the head coach of the Beverly Bandits. Been with the bunch since 2010. So if, you, if you've got some time, Coach, and when you serve that time since 2010 and giving back to these athletes, Chad, what kind of makes your program in your mind special? When you think about it, what makes the Bandits program from your mind special? Uh, for me, being a part of Bandits is the success of our kids in college. I mean, we've been very successful. Our kids are very successful in college and that's that's kind of what I pride myself on because we're always working with college coaches and and we want to give them a good product and we want our kids to have the most success they can so for me that's kind of you know it's it's you know going to Colorado coming to nationals and getting kids scholarships back when we were young Chad our coaches made us run laps you remember those days absolutely turn, around, turn around over your shoulder there's some laps <laughs> that need to be handed out they yeah that time was a little bit more funnier when the score was zero zero <laughs> <laughs> jump in there man to go for it well, I just want to I mean you guys are a loose team you like to have fun and you're down here it's a championship game so you've got to be proud about the fact that your athletes are here but what are you looking for them to do to snap into it and, and start putting some more runs on the board well if you just looked our top three batters right there made some major adjustments from the first time through the lineup I think our lefties got to make get a little bit more adjusted to the zone for the umpire and, and we need to compete they're going to keep hitting and we got to we just got to do the little things and, and make some just minor adjustments at the plate and adjust a little bit quicker but I like the way the top three even though we went out we went over three right there but we made much better better adjustments that time than we did the first time through lineup. Speak to your families. You shared with us in the scouting report that your families are a special part of who you guys are as a team. Expound upon that. Just, uh, you know, this group this group is tight. They've been together for a long time. They, they hang out together. They stay in houses together. They, you know, they have a couple adult beverages together every night. And they just, they just like being around each other. And this group is pretty much fun, so. Well said, my friend. Best of luck to you. And I, I got one more quick thing, if you don't mind. Yes, I, I'm yes. missing my uh, the best assistant coach in the country. My son, Coach Connie, couldn't come this week. So, Coach Connie, love you, buddy. That's awesome, my friend. That's awesome. Thank right. you so much for your time. All right, thank you, guys. I love that. You just mm -hmm. <laughs> he, is a, he is more fun than I think any coach at PGF. From the coach's dinner, which we had a chance He's to see. He's famous and, I guess, He's infamous. famous every year. Infamous. infamous for his presence at the coaches dinner every year so we appreciate that so it's fun to watch them come through this journey and then be here today and having a good time doing it 
Yeah, by the way, that may be the line of the tournament from anyone in front of a microphone. But that sign was very funny when the score was nothing, nothing. <laughs> Said it quickly. I loved it. <laughs> were busted, weren't they? That's great stuff. Kylie Byers sees that one sail high. Look at this, heading toward third. Why not? Head first slide in there. Anna Jo Sullivan only thought for one second and then took off. I mean, no hesitation. Now she was watching the whole way, and that's what I love about aggressive base running. It's anticipating that you're going to take that next base, even if it's not typically one that you would. It's looking and then not breaking stride. Kai pops that one, shallow center field. Coming on in is Simcoe. Will that earn them a run? It will not. Nice block. Beautiful throw on the fly by Hannah. Yeah, but that does just go to show how important it was to get over to third base. That was almost a tag and score opportunity. Still is with the runner on first with less than two outs. <laughs> Need a private investigator. <laughs> Change up. This is low to Ava Hodo. One and oh, the count. Hodo singled and scored back in the first inning, struck out in the second inning. Lexi sails that one high. Lexi Haynes in the count. Two and oh, with a runner at third. A field of Stang, Simcoe, and Callahan we peer over their shoulders. A 2-0 changeup and not interested. This is the cleanup hitter, and they're pitching careful with that runner at third. You do have first base open, but it's never ideal to give a free pass. Three and one. So what you have to be careful about here is that launch angle, if you will, that rise ball and the contact on the rise ball. Hodo has a lot of power, so she can lift it. And if she can get it deep enough to score that run at third, that's exactly what she's going to try to do. Anna took a change up, tried to lift it in the air to the right side. Blue collar catcher for this team. We'll do it again. The native of Orange Beach, Alabama, shoots it right back to the screen. And Hodo's looking to swing her stick. She's not looking for a free pass. Already has herself an RBI from that first inning. Three and two the count. Fouled the last one back. Bouncing ball toward the hole. From a deep spot in short, there is no play. That's a single and an RBI for Ava. Worked the at-bat, fouled off a tough pitch to stay alive, and drove in her second run. I hit this ball hard and just enough into the hole. I don't think there would have been a play at home regardless, and because it was so deep into that hole, no, place at fir no play at first either. Back in number 34, McKenzie Yates. Up to bat number 10, Brianna Kemp. Mackenzie Yates will run. Yates out at first base. You know, you think about the base running of Hannah Jo Sullivan, really, on what could have been a very simple wild pitch. She immediately pushed the envelope, and that set up that situation, as you talked about in the near sack fly. Changeup is high. 1-0 and the count to Brianna Kemp. This was a great watch, having her do this. The wild pitch. And she took that chance. Yeah. 
Avery wags that bat back and forth and takes high. Robbie Farmer played college football at Troy and then had some time in the NFL. Two and one the count. Up four, looking for more. To the right side, runner scampers back, a lazy pop up to the first baseman, Sidney Herman. Number 28, Katie Hart. Haley Hart, the shortstop, has had a really nice championship game. She's got a pair of singles, she's got a pair of runs, and an RBI. Haley towards short, bad hop, but a nice play out there by Addie O'Dell. 6-2 the score. I actually think that sign's funny no matter the score. Very creative. A lot of fun in that dugout. They've come a long way. Good-looking dugout, good-looking unis, and a strong program. These Birmingham Thunderbolts, their head coach, Brandon Kemp. Brandon, thanks for spending time with us. How much did it mean for your squad, a majority of these players, to win that platinum championship last year in preparation for this year? Well, you know, last year, you know, we just, we, we came together really good as a team, uh, and we've done the same this year, just fighting for each other, fighting for the game, fighting for each other, just just having a good time playing softball. And I'm really liking what your pitcher out there, Madeline Bird's been able to do this game. Talk a little bit about her performance. So Mad Madeline spins the ball so well. It's just her spin is so deceptive uh, that it causes a lot of swing misses. You know, we get a lot of we get a lot of you know great ground balls right there. Just just really spinning ball, deceptive. Uh, you know, and keeps keeps us in big ball games. What are some of the characteristics of your team that you're most proud of? Maybe their expectations for your athletes. Maybe it's the families. What are you most proud of? This this team. They every every one of these kids. They do nothing but love each other, fight for each other. They, they, we spend our entire summer with each other, and these kids just all love each other so much. And, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it. Well, great words. Thank you for letting us come in your dugout for a second. Congrats on what you've done so far. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. More fun in the dugout, by the way, behind Coach. <laughs> Bouncing ball, this one should sneak through, and it did. Bella de Real, Del Real, I should say. Sydney Herman grounded out to open the inning. But Bella with her first hit of the game. And a nice solid hit. Bennett was pulled a little bit towards first base, so this ball hit right back up the middle, just to the left of Bird. And that's what this Bandits team is going to need to do is string together a series of hits just like that to start to plug away at that lead. Hattie O'Dell with her opportunity now. Struck out looking her first at bat. Hugging the line, long run, unable to get there. Kylie good pastor gave it a good strong run. Odell, the shortstop, is really focused on her defense. As a matter of fact, three to four days a week, she said, I spend on speed and agility and really trying to grow myself as a defender. Seeing the results of it this year, this season. That's a pretty good approach as a hitter. She shoots that one the other way. Pretty swing at that softball. Yeah, you know what's working for the Bandits is they're shortening up their swings because that spin is so tough to square up on. You really have to just slow it down and focus on solid contact. You can't over swing through spin like that, and the Bandits are doing a good job of making that solid contact. Feels like that and aggression early, yes? Yes, pitch selection for sure. I think early in the ball game, we saw a lot of athletes swinging at and through that rise ball, and then watching that ball 
over the plate go by, and now we're seeing a lot of early swinging. And early in the count is where you're going to get those best pitches. What's funny, too, he knew he had a chance to really coach that Bandits team, and that's what he's doing now. It was a clean turnover of the lineup, so the second time through is with Simcoe's where we saw that different approach. That's the meeting on the mound, or I should say, and the circle continues. And some action for these bolts. Kaylee Grace favors. Big, important part of this team, really important. Is swiftly warming. Addie Poe doubled in a run and scored a run back in the second inning. Addison dreams of Texas and Florida State is a couple of destinations she'd love to play for. That one right down the middle with some rise to it. Patty dedicating this season to her late coach Scott Salenti, an inspiration and an angel in the outfield for her this season. Wished her to be the best that she is on and off the field. So Scott being honored in this successful event, those two orange crosses on her cheek. Very young age, this talented athlete has overcome being diagnosed as a T1D, a type 1 diabetic. A lot of discipline if you want to be an athlete, and that's something you journey through in your life. And good for her. And I think it's important to be open with it and, and maybe the struggles that go along with it. There are a lot of athletes out there who have overcome and are working through it and, and performing at a top level, so she's got some great role models. Pops that one up. Coming on down the line, the third baseman, Madeline Flamia, makes the play for the second out of the inning. They get Addie that time, so she did damage first time up. Adriana Callahan now. She also singled and stole her base back in the second inning. Adriana Callahan. Callahan, the right fielder. They holler Callie out of that dugout, her nickname. Hold the hands in, and in between hop, but an easy out when it's all said and done as Daigle Wilson just turns around and steps on the bag. Madeline Bird restored order. Cause we rock, California. better places to be than here in Southern California. And especially in a summer that has been incredibly forgiving as it pertains to heat. And beautiful out here. Good pastor takes her turn now. She has walked. She has single. And number 88 takes in and off the plate. G. Kylie Goodpaster. <laughs> Healy takes a strike over the outside corner. I know these Thunderbolts would love to put a couple more runs up on the board, especially the way the Bandits have been knocking on the door. Foul. She'll come back and do it again. Talked about the challenges of playing varsity sports in high school as a middle schooler. Playing at that point with 18-year-olds, some of them. 
I mean, not be intimidated to, to handle your game. He works out six days a week, just about year round. She takes high, two and two the count. Combination of field work, hitting, strength, and conditioning. She takes pride in taking reps, does good pastor at all fielding positions. See what Coach Chad wants to do here. Four for 28. Four for 28. So it looks like we'll have a change as Hensley, Ava Hensley, moves into right field. Four for 28 was the call from down on the field. One skips in there. There's number four. In the battle, in the battle. Now working away to a full count, and I, I do like the way that Hames is using that changeup. She's coming up a short, little short. Shot to that right side. Ava out there in right field. Goldfish, her fun nickname. She's from Fairfield, Ohio. Hensley, the daughter of Crystal and Chris. Cousin Faith plays softball, plays it well. Bouncing ball. Bobble. Nowhere to go at that point. High bounce. So a good pastor is on. Herman unable to make the play. This looked like it was going to be a routine ground ball. You could see the way it just pops right out of Herman's glove at first base. It surprised her also. She was going to tag the bag. Charlie's turn. Taking high. Charlie is single, drove it a run. A fielder's choice drove in a run. Three RBIs overall in the day. <laughs> Curveball, that's the outside corner, one and one the count. From Hoover, Alabama, Spain Park High School. C.J. Hawkins is her high school head coach. She's a daughter of Michelle and Rodney. Buried that pitch in. Charlie also played basketball as a freshman. Varsity basketball at Hoover High School. Right around a 4.1 GPA in the classroom. Already making an impact. Heading into her sophomore year. Field, court, classroom, all of them. Line drive left field. Diving attempt, plays it on the hop, and a nice job by Stan keeping it in front of her. She took a chance there, leaving her feet. If that gets by, it's big trouble, so good hand work there. Yeah, it was really nice glove work. That ball was taken towards the line. And you have to make a decision, hang back and let it long hop. Or if you're gonna go for it, make sure you keep it in front if you aren't able to catch it. And she does a great job of trapping it and not letting it get by. So we go back to where we came from in the beginning as Lauren Zadi gets the call to go to work in the circle. She started, gave way to Lexi Hames, and now as predicted, you talked that this would happen. Just a new perspective, a fresh look. These two pitchers trying to keep their team within four. And so Ava, she hopes to take it to the finish line. 
I remember Ava got those first two quick outs yes. in the top of the first inning. I mean, she was electric and on fire, and it took that one really solid hit up the middle by Byers. And then the hit parade just started, and you throw in a couple of free passes, so that doesn't help, but it, not the shining performance in that one half inning for Lauren Zotti, but when she came out, we knew there was a chance she was gonna come back into this ball game. So we'll see what type of adjustments that she's able to make. And I'll remind all of you what she shared with us. She said, I have a fastball changeup, rise ball, an off-speed rise ball. She said, I learned my rise ball at age 10 from my pitching coach, Coach Hayhurst. Was a nasty one herself. He was a men's fast pitch pitcher. When I started my pitching career at eight, that's where I learned that pitch at 10. So she re enters the game. Ava Lorenzotti. Out of Beecher, Illinois. Madeline Flamia has her first opportunity stepping in, sees it go to the backstop. And runners on second and third now. The Bandits coaching staff asking if that was a foul ball. Bunted through it. Very close. Very close, but it wasn't. Good pictures there on the replay. was a good shot. Bouncing ball and it's a bouncing foul ball. with an 0-2, big RBI opportunity, and she takes. One and two, the count. And clear to pull a little bit in the outfield and center field. There's a lot of room in right center field. There's a spot for her to shoot out there. Well, that was a change of pace, rise ball up, and he, she shot it right to the backstop. Yeah, I got lucky on that one, bounced right off the padding on the backstop, and perfectly in front of the plate. Inside, three and two, the count. Three, two. Hold the hands in, chops it foul, and so we do it again. This is a great at bat. I think it's a, it's a good sequence for Lauren Zotti, who's just coming into the ball game and getting her rhythm back. And then out of that nine hole, Flamia putting together a really nice at bat. Flamia, rocket shot foul. Water of Tara and Tommy seeing the softball pretty well right now. This is an eight pitch at bat, pitch number nine about to come home. Three, two. And out of room over there. The at-bat goes on. Madeline's dreams as it pertains to school, engineering, majoring in civil engineering. Three, two. Again. Moving towards a dozen pitches. I think that's a great location with that rise ball to keep it in tight, but you got to watch those hands. She was able to get up and on top of that pitch pretty well. Just got a piece of a change up. Thought that was the pitch there. Lost count, we're at 12. Next one, 13. Oh 
This is pitch number 12 coming home. Spinning, unique spin. It sneaks through one. And it's an RBI. Incredible job. And did they call that a dead ball or did they not? Yes, the second base umpire spotting that and making that call said it was fouled off the leg and that's what caused the unique spin. Second base umpire making that call. I'm guessing they're going to ask that to be reviewed. I, I don't think that this was off the foot, not, at, not oh even goodness. close. Yes. Yeah, it was it was a cue ball. Yes. And it had some some spin on it, that's for sure, but definitely not off the foot. Is this a reviewable play? There's a lengthy list. I believe it is a play that can be challenged, and they will. Well, that'll overturn it right away. I believe it is a play that can be challenged. The second base umpire calling this one foul. So this is the, the second challenge being spent here. And so this will be the final challenge and it'll be two for two because this is going to be overturned. And this will be a single and an RBI. My great at bat just went on forever and ever and when you know <laughs> the funkiest of all swings ended the at bat. The quickest review we've had. Yes. <laughs> Conversation, Chad continuing that runner placement. I think that one was, I believe, a little bit easier here. Runners on first and third. The run scores. You had runners on second and third. So seven to two is the score. As I see it, runners right now are on first and third. Yeah, I'm not sure how else it could be. I don't, I don't know if that's exactly what and the second Coach conversation, this, I'm not quite sure what the conversation is about. But it continues. We've had a couple of lengthy conversations with the umpiring staff. They want to get it right. quite sure what this discussion is about. And he has reviewed two, and I'm not quite sure if they're trying to wrap this into a second play. I'm not quite sure what they're looking at here. Oh, I think this might be the Bandit's second review. So they'll communicate about. So they want to take a look at interference coming around second base. Yeah, avoiding the shortstop. You tell me what you saw there, Amanda. You know, I, it, that's hard to tell because it doesn't look like there was contact made. It almost like she was trying to create contact. 
And to me, as it was developing in real time, it looked like there was a hesitation on the part of Odell when she was at shortstop, like she wasn't anticipating that getting by the pitcher. I didn't see contact and that causing the hesitation, but it was a close one. She sees stops, and I think when she stops, she's assuming that Lauren Zadi is going to field that ball. So they continue to look at it. They look at it quite closely. And they'll keep the runners, no interference there. Investigator, isn't he? He is a good private investigator. Yes. He had a call overturned at first earlier. Do you recall? Yes. Yes. And then he had a second review that he turned into a 2A. He lost me. That's his third <laughs> review. That was his third review. But this last one was a Bolts review, and oh, then it call. went good to call. the Bandits review. The umpires will get together. Thank you. There's, there's your reminder. <laughs> In a moment, we'll have an opportunity to see Maisie Harmon hit. She's got a bat in her hands, number 19 on that jersey. Maisie is from Virginia. One more time, Amanda. Any idea what this could be? About? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I wish we could have one of the umpires mic'd. Maybe we can get some inside scoop at some point, but. Seven to two, the score. Maisie Harmon waits. Stretches, holds that bat towards her toes. This conversation continues. This is the final. <laughs> That's a great look right there. Well done, Maisie. All I want to do is hit. I've been waiting all day for this chance. This is our final PGF event of the year, final PGF championship event of the year. And I just want to be here longer. We want to all <laughs> no, spend more time ready. together. I'm not ready to say goodbye. We're not ready. Hey, Maisie, go for it. Tara and JC are her parents. Caleb, her younger brother. Howen fouled back to the screen for the Virginia native. I like it. She is ready. You'd think after a long lull in the game, you might want to take a pitch to get your timing back. Nah. She doesn't want to waste a strike. This is a 4.0 student who spends a lot of time mentoring younger students and also aiding students with disabilities. That one sailed high. Good spin to that one, but not interested. Seven to two is the score. Got a little confusing there, Freed. I was trying to recall who asked for replays when and how. And you righted the ship, I appreciate that. Did I though? I, I'm not sure, but <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. I'm gonna go with the Amanda's always right rule. I, I, I'm not sure. One and two the count. Coming back our way. That was a pretty cool for customer play there. He's got the shades on. The 
Good looking goatee rocking. One and two the count. Inside corner strike three. Good pitch there, freezes Maisie. First out of the inning. Yeah, that's a great pitch on that strike three after going high in the zone, just paints that corner inside. One and oh, the count. Runner moves up. Well, we can, whether we agree to disagree or think you evened it out or figured it out, I, I just know I'm pretty sure Chad Moran has no more reviews. I think you're correct with that. That one is high and inside. 2-0 and oh the count to Hannah Joe Sullivan. <laughs> Hannah Joe's had a good day, a couple of singles, a couple of stolen bases. Side corner. Gave a touch and feel with that pitch. Yeah, it's been a nice pitch this inning. Two and one the count. <laughs> Same one. Backdoor pitch there, spin to that curveball. And if you can leave it on that inside corner and maybe get something close to the handle towards the left side, you'll hold those runners. Three and two the count. It's a five-run lead. Start thinking about if you can do some damage here, what you can do with this game. But a swing and a miss quiets that noise. Rise ball, and Hannah Joe goes down on strikes. Really pretty rise ball. A lot of movement on this pitch. Outside corner, strike one to Kylie Byers. to the count. Swinging for the downs that time. Virginia High School League State Champions, class four this past year. She was an all-region competitor as a freshman. We'll do it again, no balls and two strikes to count. Calls herself a really good base runner, does Kylie. Good speed that double showed it. She opened up the floodgates back in the first inning. We've had a couple of really strong first innings this tournament in these championship games. And in a lot of those games, that first inning really determined the outcome of the game. Popped up. Looking into that light up above. Brooks Stang turns it into an out. It's a five-run lead in the championship game. Time for the sluggers out of the Midwest to go to work the Bandits. All Californians love the fact that they can surf and ski in the same day. And as you take a look inland, don't have to go too much further than that to get to Lake Arrowhead or Big Bear. And enjoy a day on the slopes and then head back this way to the beach and surf to wrap up your day. 14U Premier National Championship game. Premier Girls fast pitch, the bottom of the fifth inning. The Beverly Bandits down five. Ariel Kruger to lead things off. Van Buren Township in Michigan. One pitch, one out. Bird in the circle comes right back on the attack. 
Now she's had some really nice innings, some clean innings. There's been some she's had to work her way out, but for the most part has felt very much in control. Anna Simcoe is 0 for 2. Struck out, fly to left field. Another Michigander, slightly open stance, stands straight up as she takes outside. Slaps that one off the dirt, and she is on. Look at that reaction, that's great. That was just perfect placement in that 5-6 hole, and that's some nice fielding. Hart gets that in and out of her glove, throws it across the diamond. I almost thought she was gonna have her, because she was so efficient on that transfer. The throw a little up, brings the foot off the bag. One and oh, the count to Brooke Stang. This is a triple threat athlete. Drive the gap shots, lay down a bunt. And a very good defender with a strong arm. We've seen Brooke out there. Too good to take, one and one the count. Lying above, we'll watch this 1-1 pitch come home. It's hit up toward that drone camera, but the shortstop is there. Haley Hart is there for the second out of the inning. Two outs in the infield in the air. That presents an opportunity now to extend things for Ava Ratliff. Outstanding catcher. MCA Diamond Sports National Catcher of the Year. She takes high, 1-0 and oh the count. She broke three school records her freshman year with 21 home runs. First in the nation. She led all freshmen in homers. It's a better way to look at it. She had 50 hits. 21 of them were homers. Wow. 4.0 GPA in the classroom as well. Hitters count, 2-0. 3-0 oh. oh, the count. She intends to study Miss Radliff dentistry. I'm still thinking of those 20 home runs. Uh -huh. Three and one the count. This would have been a player under the old recruiting rules that probably would have already been committed. Right. Yeah, you take your chances on an athlete like this. You bet. Three and two the count. David told us when we run into her in a decade, she'll be in her third year of dental school, but also be owning or co-owning a gym and helping people start their workout lifestyle. Ooh, I like that. It's a hypothetical, why not go for it? Popped up. That was the secret to elevate this inning. Not looking for ground balls, but Bird knowing exactly what she wanted to do. I'm coming up high, high in the zone. You're hitting it up toward that drone. Beautiful Irvine, California. Bill Barber Park and Deanna Manning Stadium. Such a wonderful, peaceful two weeks here. I mean, in the sky, not peaceful on the diamonds and in the parks of Fountain Valley and Huntington Beach. It's certainly a pretty shot over there. Seven to two the score in this championship game, 14U championship game. The Birmingham Bolts, premier 2025 Kemp team. 
For the Bandits and for the Bolts, this wraps up their summer schedules that have had them in different places around the United States. And Florida, Kansas, Indiana, Colorado, Illinois, twice. And then out here in Huntington Beach, that's the Bandits' journey this summer. Ava Odo takes high. 1-0 oh the count. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, glad to have you with us. The Bolts have been to Florida, Alabama, Colorado, back to Florida, and now out here in Southern California. You know you're confident if you put on your schedule PGF Nationals and you list Irvine, California. <laughs> Most of the games are played at Huntington Beach and Fountain Valley. There's only one game played in Irvine, California. This one, at this age group. But that's what they put on their schedule, Irvine. Turns out they were right. How you speak it into existence, and in this case, they actually wrote it down, and you have to get there once you do that. Bolts remind you to follow them on Twitter at Thunderbolts07. Telling the stories of their athletes. Catch them on Facebook. Love it. Love promoting their own. 7-2 to the score. Right in on the knuckles. Oh boy, there's some strength and a little luck. When that happens, Ava will take it. That's her third hit. And it just sounded uncomfortable when she swung, but she's got so much power. And just put this in a good place, right back up the middle. Good things happen when you aim up the middle. Pretty lengthy conversation. We may see a different hitter at this point. Kaylee Grace Favors will hit. 34, courtesy runner. Okay, and Mackenzie Yates. Yates will run again. 19 for four. And now to that number 11, Grace favors. And Kaylee Grace gets the call. Robert Favors is out there coaching at first. Dad. Grace from Orange Beach, Alabama. She's in the hole 0-1. Daughter of Robert and Casey. Uncle Michael played football at Alabama and won a championship. She, a couple of years back, was the MVP of the 2019 PGF at a younger age group. Extra innings. Ranks her very high. Number one pitcher in the class of 2025, two years in a row. She's hitting now, though. And she is really hitting. Scolded the center field. Please pass the exit velocity. My goodness. She just stunned Yates out there on second base. Froze her, hit this ball so hard. Right at Yates leading off his second base. Just textbook hitting. That looked like Yates was leading off a third. It came at her that quickly. One and oh, the count to Haley Hart. Haley Grace, you scolded that softball. Hart's had a good day, a couple of hits. 2-0 the count. And Kaylee Grace is another one that would be committed. And the old rules of verbal would already be there. 3-0 the count. How about 
that patient back to back singles Haley Hart since I've grown as a player does Haley overall work to my mental game that's my focus has been important and it's been a big part of my growth so we see a change again is that correct because we see Lexi Hames trot out to the circle it was the second time that they have swapped spots today. Well, three runners on, nobody out. You find a way to score those three runs, you're now plus eight. If you do get three outs, you're the champion. That's a lot of ifs to this point, though, but the possibility is out there now. And I think that's what led to this pitching change is the bandits want to extend this game they want their full six outs yep to be able to inch back at that lead they've had big run scoring innings they know it can happen they just need to start getting some momentum but if these three runs score they're gonna they're gonna lose out on three of those chances Kaylee good pastor has been on three times a walk a single and a miscue allow her to reach pitch inside a screwball 1 and 0 the count takes that one right off the screen one ball and one strike the count to the daughter of Isaac and Amber good pastor Open to study business once she arrives at college. Good take on that tempting changeup. That's a really nice pitch, and that didn't miss by much, just slightly down in the zone. Looks like it crosses at about the knees, dies at the end. Two and two, the count. Base is full. Asked Kaylee what her favorite meal was. She said spaghetti. And I've learned to make it myself the best way. Outside, three and two. As a parent, I can tell you that is the best way when you can make your own meal. <laughs> Nowhere to put him. Count is full. Nobody out. That's an RBI. And it's eight to two. And now Charlie Bennett. Charlie, another one with a good day. A couple of RBIs, a couple of singles. Also reached with a fielder's choice. Owen won the count to Charlie. Yeah, Charlie's had a really nice day. Love to cap it off with a four for four performance here. Set the freshman record for home runs for her high school team. Was her student of the month in her entire high school for the freshman class in September of last school year. That's a good way to start. Pop that one right side. Tracking it toward the corner. Play is made. Throw toward the plate with the slide. One run scores. Another run. Come on down. That's a, a big run that time. Two runs score. Sack fly, RBI, and then a miscue. And it's an eight-run lead. Now plus eight. Three outs to a victory. And Madeline Flamia now with a 10-2 number. Looks to add on. Nice 
nice job behind the plate by Radliff. It's warm, she's in the sun and still grinding with her team down eight. Catchers are a different breed, aren't they folks? They absolutely are. Bouncing ball, that will play another run, a nine run lead for the Thunderbolts. Madeline with an RBI, her second of the day. And the Thunderbolts are just continuing to put the pressure on offensively. So nice, solid swinging, but a lot of hits that look just like that. Solid contact up the middle. Finding holes where the bandits aren't. Daigle Wilson now. Curveball misses outside. Seeking her first hit of the day. Had a really good tournament. Two and zero the count. State athlete, 2A level, second team in Alabama. She has made all three levels of the Honor Society, elementary, junior, and then the National Honor Society as a student with a 4.3 GPA. 2-1, that's high, three and one the count. You know, it's frustrating to be out there in the circle when you're facing a team that feels as good as these bolts do at the plate. As you start to get away from your game plan a little, start to throw a few more balls rather than work ahead and work confidently through the zone. Fires a strike in there. Not trying to do too much. Eagles hometown in South Alabama, hit by Hurricane Sally in 2020, home sustained damage. Her whole community came together to help in the rebuilding. That one's low. And that's ball four. Quick visit, quick conversation. Ratliff comes out. Yeah, Hames hasn't, at least that hasn't seemed as though she's getting the calls that were maybe called earlier in the ball game. This is a nice pitch. Crosses the knees. It looks like it's a good spot inside. All right, here we go. Couple of 22s dueling now. Hames trying to find things in the circle. And Hannah Joe Sullivan, the speedster. A couple of runners out there, a couple of singles. Run scored, a pair of stolen bases as well. 0-1 oh the count, 11-2 the score. Remember, this Birmingham Thunderbolts team is in this premier level championship at the 14U age group because they won it all last year at the platinum level. You earn yourself a berth if you win it all. Boy, nice play, positives. If you're looking for positives, how about that play by Addie O'Dell in a tough inning again, like her catcher, Ava Ratliff, put her nose right on the grindstone. Yeah, you gotta love it when your defense is staying in the ball game, regardless of what's going on around him. That was a beautiful pickup on a really high short hop, stayed down really well on it and ran through with the throw.
pretty in-depth conversation here. Cam Byers, Robert Favors in the coach's box, Brandon Kemp. Into an opportunity now, let's see. Mackenzie Yates, who has been the pinch runner extraordinaire all afternoon. Mackenzie Yates gets an opportunity to hit. Mackenzie, Kenzie. Montpellier, Virginia. Patrick Henry High School. And mom is Julie, dad is Greg. Her mom played softball in college. Grandpa played football for the Florida Gators. This is Kenzie. Four point one GPA made her varsity basketball and softball teams as a ninth grader. Two and zero, the count. I love to see athletes like Yates get opportunities like this because teams, when you don't have a really large roster and you're in these championship games, you have to have athletes willing to assume roles, whether it's a pinch runner, pinch hitter. So they don't always get bulk of innings, but they're just as important to the team's success. Foul ball. And if I may say something pretty blunt, but I believe true, Kudos to the families because at that younger age, 10, 12, 14, you could have a mom or a dad in the ear of the athlete, creating a tone that's not a positive developmental tone. This is an excellent player, varsity player, right? But if you're playing on an elite team, you may have a role for a year or for a part of a season. So kudos to the family. That's a very good point. And you hear a lot of cheering throughout these couple of weeks when we've had role players come in because they've been able to do that with these large leads. The families are excited that these athletes are getting an opportunity to get in there. Funky spin off the end of the bat, and it's a nine-run lead, which means this talented team who won it all last year at the Platinum Division has a chance to do it again, this time at the highest level. 14U Premier PGF National Title Game. bit of anxiousness as parents taking a step up watching from that upper tier from the walkway the nerves do take over it's championship time we'll see could be got to keep this lead at eight or more it's nine right now and over the outside corner that strike one well it's time to extol the virtues as well of Madeline Bird and how well she's done in the circle today Oh, she's been so much fun to watch. And think about back to that first inning, three consecutive strikeouts to open this thing up. In the left field, two outs away. But since then, it's been all about her defense. But she really did set the tone. Bella Del Rio has pitched in a single. She also struck out back in the second inning. Birdie, the story in the circle from Baymanette, Alabama. She fires strike one. She plays for Anthony Cox. Does this talented pitcher at Baldwin County High School. Annie and Matthew are her parents, and her younger brother is Magnum. What a great name. Oh, and to the count. Madeline was National Honor Society member, junior in sixth grade, beta club in eighth grade. And now in high school, sports a 4.2 GPA. Madeline's going to have a lot of opportunities in the upcoming year. Change up, one out away. And by the way, tip of the cap to Ava Hodo, who blocked that one up. One out away. There we go, Ava. That one slides by. That smile's not there as much. Hey, Madeline Bird. She idolizes a pitcher who was in this circle, in this stadium last year, Jordy Ball, who now is a household name at the collegiate level. 
a brief conversation. They take the softball. What an outing. She gives way to her teammate. What an incredible outing. And these two pitchers together, Kaylee Grace Favors and the talented Madeline Byrne. What a one-two punch. This is an opportunity. Favors has been so important to get their team to this point. The DP's coming in to pitch. And so Favors will try and lock it down. Boy, what can you say about Madeline? It's interesting. She shared one of the challenges she's overcome is to always show coaches, opponents, teammates, and everyone else that her faith in God that has instilled something in her that can't be measured, and that it's heart and her love to pitch for her team. She hopes that that's what everyone sees. Beautiful Southern California day. Madeline Bird was the story. Let's go, KG! KG's turn now. KG needs to just get one out. The Orange Beach, Alabama native. It's a 2025. Orange Beach High School. Heading into her sophomore year, Addie O'Dell now. Screwball, 0 1 the count. Outside and off the plate. Odell singled back in the fourth inning. KG fires that blazer home. I mean, you could hear it, couldn't you? The one, two. Screwball missed outside. Nice take by Addy. Good student in the classroom. We saw her hit and hit a bolt a moment ago. KG trying to lock it down. Outside. Full count, two outs. Wild. And as she turned that one over, a screwball started away and ended up in the other batter's box. So an opportunity to continue to extend the game. Remember, you earn yourself another frame if you score a couple of runs this inning. And you know that's a goal. Addie Poe. up in comes the shortstop Haley Hart and the Birmingham Thunderbolts are the premier girls fast pitch 14U premier division champions what a day to be a bolt They won it all last year at the Platinum Division. They earned the berth in this division. And now they're flying high. 11 to two, the final score. Such a team with great heart in that other dugout. As Chad Moran consoles his players. Such a week of hard work to get to this point. This outstanding coach who has seen these athletes through year after year. And congratulations to the Birmingham Thunderbolts Kemp for winning this, the PGF Championship.
Madeline Bird was very good. The coaching staff that led this team also very good. We'll chat with both right now. Amanda Freed, take it away down there. This was an exciting game. Congratulations on a 14U Premier National Championship. Madeline, you pitched a gem of a game. So much fun to watch. But I want to know how much fun and exciting and I don't want to say easy, but how relaxed were you going out there knowing that your team had your back offensively all game long? It's so easy to pitch when I'm with, on their team because I know that no matter what, they're always going to be right there beside me. And Coach, you know how difficult it is to get through these tournaments and your team fought hard and they were resilient and you overcame struggles, but how proud are you that they were able to come out top when it really mattered? Like I've said before a lot, at the beginning of the summer, I challenged this team to come together as a team, play for each other, fight for each other. We're beat, we're banged up. I, mean, I, got, I got bruises all over kids, but their heart is what outlasted everything. And we could see it, and congratulations. You guys were phenomenal to watch. Go enjoy your trophy. You're a national champion, and hope to see you again next year. What a spectacular event. What an incredible two weeks. Congratulations to both the Bandits and the Thunderbolts, but the champions are the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Congratulations to all the hard work on our production team and the work they have done, the leadership of PGA and PGF at the very top with Dan Hay. By name, they certainly lead us, but by position, they've traveled from around the country, many from in the Midwest, to lead this production team, and it's been our honor. The goal, promote the athletes. The goal, promote the sport. And the goal, promote the best of the best, Premier Girls Fast Pitch. Take note of these names. She's Amanda Freed. I'm Darren Sutton. And he's John Walsh, our senior producer. Until next time, it's always a blast to be a part of PGF.